I recently made a signal generator based curved tracer, also known as an oscilloscope octopus, and I've been exploring all of the different ways it can be used. A curved tracer is a device that you can use with any oscilloscope that has an X-way capability, and it will plot a Lisa Zhu pattern on the screen in real time. It can be used in many different ways, and I've discovered that it can also be used to estimate the resonant frequency of a guitar pickup. An internet search will reveal that there are a few different ways to perform these tests. My method is a twist on the Lisa Zhu method, and I just inject a one volt sine wave directly into the pickup. It may not be as accurate as using a driver coil setup, but in my testing of eight different pickups, it appears that I get within five to 10% of the actual resonant frequency. If you want to learn more about the curve tracer I used in this video, there will be a link to that video below. The equivalent circuit of a guitar pickup is a voltage source, a large value inductor, a resistor in the kilo ohm range, and a small value capacitor to ground. With a signal generator, we can directly introduce a sine wave into the guitar pickup to induce a voltage, and then look at the frequency response using this simple curve tracer. Yes, it's not going to be exactly the same thing as the pickup magnet sensing the vibration of the string and turning that into an electrical impulse, which can then be amplified, but for our purposes, this will be close enough. I'm not sure that the pickup really knows the difference anyway, other than it will see a steady state signal at a fixed voltage versus an envelope that starts off big and then rapidly diminishes. I'm only looking for an approximation, not an exact frequency plot which is probably going to vary somewhat from pickup to pickup anyway, especially in older pickups. So here's my testing setup. It's going to be the same thing I used in my previous videos on the wall pedal inductors. We're just going to take the output of this old analog signal generator, tap off of it to a frequency counter so that we can see what the frequency is. And here's my uh, oscilloscope octopus, which I'll have a uh, link to down below. Here is my guitar pickup test fixture. I uh, just made this so that the pickup would stay in one place, not move around. I have a little jumper wire that comes off of here and uh, I can either bypass this dummy load or put the dummy load into the circuit. This dummy load is just a 200K resistor in parallel with a 470 Pico capacitor and it's to simulate the effect of the volume and tone controls and uh, so it kind of gives you something in between what you would have on a Stratocaster and a Les Paul and then we'll take the output of that and we'll feed it into this old analog oscilloscope that uh, does XY mode rather well. Using this is very simple. All we have to do is connect these two leads to the tabs on the testing fixture here. And we're ready to turn on our equipment and start testing. Doing the actual test is quite simple. Here I have a 500 hertz signal coming out of the signal generator. And this is what we see on the screen. Now I'm gonna take this up higher and higher and higher until this ellipse kind of becomes just a flat line which is about right there. And if you look at the frequency counter, about 4.2 kilohertz. And sometimes it's a little hard to, to really see that well, so you can use a triangle wave. And the point where these two guys meet in the middle, right, right there, is 4.1 kilohertz. So that's the approximate resonant frequency of the pickup, which is basically where the current and voltage are exactly in phase. Now, just to show you what the difference is not having a dummy load, we'll take this dummy load out of the circuit and now go up here, you'll see the, the ellipse got a lot larger and we have to go all the way to about 7.2 kilohertz 
to reach the resonant frequency without the dummy load. So after I was done testing all these pickups, I made a spreadsheet so I could compare my findings and I did a lot of research online to compare other people's results with various pickups and to make sure that I wasn't way out in left field. So I'm confident that this method will get me within three to 500 hertz of the actual resonant frequency of the pickup. So after you've measured the inductance and you've come up with a resonant frequency, which I usually do just unloaded, I can kind of come up with an estimated capacitance by using an online calculator. And that's how I came up with these capacitances. The only pickup that I actually had a resonant frequency number for was the Seamer Duncan JB. And my measurements unloaded came within 400 kilohertz of their published data. However, the DC resistance that I measured is a little different than theirs. So that could explain why I came up with 5.9 kilohertz versus their published 5.5 kilohertz. So all that to say, I think this is a fairly accurate way to measure resonant frequency of the pickup without having to do any kind of special thing like build a driver coil and have a program so you can make a bode plot and all these things. I think this is just a simple, quick and dirty method that'll give you some idea of a pickup's resonant frequency, especially when you have no idea what it is because it's not published or it's a company that's out of business and you can't find any info on their pickups. So I hope you've found this useful. If you have, please leave a comment and let me know. Thanks.